Now nation watch it again once more with another dance hall update and people the DPP keeps on exposing herself more and more and more we'll come to talk about it but before we get into it please remember to like the video and get the notification bell so you can be notified when I drop new videos now people now see a screenshot and this screenshot is from Vibes Cartel Instagram story you see me I say and we are going to read where basically the article part of the, the, the image says it says refrain from trying cartel and co accuse case in public lawyers urge DPP now cartel then wrote and he said the lady stop skittle out your thing go and take several seats quit being an embarrassment to the establishment it's very unbecoming with respect now we know who he's talking Yes, I mean, I say we know who he is addressing. Yes, I mean, I say because what she's defending right now makes no sense. Yes, I mean, I say so she can go take several seats. Now, anyways, when I say a footage right now, when I say Cliff Hughes right now up on the screen, and basically, this is Cliff Hughes basically on his recent radio talk show program. Yes, I mean, I say, and he has a audio. I'm not sure if it was actually leaked. Or whatever, but you don't know. Cliff Hughes made it public too. Yes, I mean, I say, everyone, when he played it in his talk show on the radio station, yes, I mean, I say, I can basically hear the DPP confessing to something that we would classify as corruption. Yes, yeah, she basically give her herself. She attack it out plain. She not hide again. Well, people. Um, cartel posted that video on his Instagram page and he captioned it and he said hold on did she just admit that she and such man have done this several times before oh so it wasn't the first time constitutional rights were breached when you're poor and can't afford to fight all the way to the top is a hell of a thing the constitution is a sacred document and a constitutional rights belong to the people regardless of social slash financial status when Vibes Cartel wrote that, look who commented on it. Sean Storm, the zombie. The man said them things happen when black people have too much power. Plus, she did have a lot of thinking but never thought about my rights to a fair trial. So we all know say, this is directed to the DPP. You see what I say? But what you are going to know, people? We are going to play the audio. It's a very, very lengthy audio. It's about seven minutes, but I tell the people it's worth it. So now just listen, listen carefully, listen carefully and keenly to what she's saying. And remember, people, listen keenly now what she is saying. Because no? guess what? She basically exposed herself. She has snitched on herself. You see me? So, I'm going to listen now. Zine, here goes. Heat from the Vibes Cartel Privy Council ruling continue. And this morning, for the first time, the DPP was responding since the judgment came down last Thursday morning. And uh, she was asked by Tona and Ricardo about the advice she gave to the judge in the trial after it was revealed that there was an attempt to bribe the jurors. DPP, having been told that all of your jurors in 2014 had been offered a $500,000 bribe. Why did you not in advise the judge that it, were probably, it was probably best to dismiss the, the jury, which was now obviously tainted? You see, you, you are now trying to get me to discuss the matter and I told you that I didn't wish to. No, but certainly you this see, point, DPP, is important because here the law lords are saying you advised the judge that you were prepared to proceed even though you knew that the entire panel, 11 jurors, the four women told you, had been offered bribes. Wouldn't that mean, wouldn't that mean in your judgment, DPP, that the entire jury, as the law lords have now found, was contaminated and should well, have no, been terminated well, or discharged? Well, first of all, I am not the judge. We True, but you gave, you gave advice that you were prepared to proceed. And what I'm trying to but understand... You were prepared to proceed. But why, with a, why, why were you prepared to proceed with a jury that was contaminated? No, no, no. All the other factors that some of which I cannot go into in terms of... So you were thinking about cost. You were thinking about how long the matter had been going. 
speaking of security issues, there were a lot of other issues that we cannot go into into the public domain and what our information from the foreman was, what she was saying, was that all of the attempts had to do with acquittal. Acquittal. Clearly, if it had been the other way, we would have, I mean, clearly, given the overriding objective of any, any case, which is fairness to the accused. But what would have been perhaps planted in the mind of the jurors is, okay, you need to acquit. And remember that these persons, at least two of them, are very famous. So it would have been, as far as the prosecution, when we discussed it, we would have been at the, those ones at a great disadvantage. This is not the first time. But with the greatest that respect, have, DPB, that's not persuasive because what yes, we want you, to, what I want you to focus on, is the fact that the process now had been corrupted and contaminated, and you advised the judge that you were comfortable proceeding with a contaminated and corrupt but process. This is not the first time that I have had to deal with jury tampering. And be and that as it may, first. in the exercise of your judgment, why did you not see it fit? to bring to an end a matter that had what? been corrupted. After 64 days of trial? Isn't the interest of protecting the impartial trial greater than the length of time that had I elapsed? I agree with you on paper, but I have done other cases where there has been jury tampering to the great negative of the prosecution. I have seen cases, I've seen jury inquiries where the juror having been questioned, it was quite clear that it was either an accused person or an accused person's relative that approached the juror. And the juror was able to indicate to the court that it did not make any difference. He would still be able to have an impartial situation in his mind. I have had the experience, I've prosecuted many cases, and when asked, I have indicated that we don't have any problems. So in other words, we are prepared to take our chances and just try to make sure that you have a very powerful address. But this, this what happened in a couple of the cases I've dealt with, didn't happen during summation. It happened before we got to summation. So I have had the experience before of jury tampering. And I have been asked before, what is my view, being the prosecutor in the matter? And even after the inquiry, it's a judgment. It's quite clear that you don't know if the juror is telling you everything about the encounter with the relative of the accused. But you are willing to take the chance, nonetheless. So it has happened. I mean, both myself and Mr. Taylor, who was the prosecutor, we didn't drop from the sky. It's not the first case that we are both having to deal with. And in our experience, we have had to deal with cases where you have issues arising. When with the benefit of hindsight, with the benefit of hindsight, do you regret, do you regret the submissions you made? You are not going to get me there. You are not going to get me there. Well, quite an interesting five minutes of uh, exchanges there. And the takeaway for me is the DPP seems to be relying on the fact that in her long prosecutorial career, she has made a judgment call, several judgment calls, in a number of instances of jury tampering. And I wonder, does that make it legally correct? It might be a call that has been wrong because surely based on what we now have from the Privy Council jury misconduct undermines the fundamental principle of the justice system of the accused being entitled to a fair trial and the fact that you have been doing it several occasions before. 
does not make it right. Those who have been in such matters, do they have cause, reason to wonder at minimum? It is, it is, Madam DPP, quite, quite a space we are in. So Gaza Nation, this female basically admit to corruption. I have nothing more to say about her and this situation because she basically exposed herself. She snitched on herself. And we can see it clearly. So this woman upholds 100%, not even 100%, 1000% she upholds with corruption. She upholds with it. You know what I mean? So just imagine how much youth they are prison right now, innocent. Yes, so I say because they never have the amount of money to afford a decent lawyer and a decent attorney. So them show them way in the system. Yes, your life and fear though. Yes, so I say, and this female basically is admitting to it that yes, she's appalling with corruption. You know what I mean? Boy, I mean I tell the people this is the justice system that Jamaica has a corrupted one and it's evident now clearly clearly it's evident you know what I mean but people as I said before I have nothing more to say on this or this situation because she exposed herself so I'm finished speaking about her at this moment so if you have anything to say feel free to leave it in the comment section I never can tell probably your comment can spark an next update people you see what I say? You don't know, remember to watch the video, like the video, share the video, watch the playlist, like the playlist, share the playlist, and don't forget, watch the ads, people. You see what I say? So I'm going to run left and right about now, people, because trust and believe me, I tell you, it gets more and more and more fiery as the days goes on, because we know so these top politicians and head of states and judicial officials, they're under fire right now. You understand? So it's getting more and more fiery. So until the next time, and the next topic. I'm out.